Good morning, everyone. A happy Thursday. Lisa and Lydia, the LB show yeah, today. Yeah, it's us. Yeah, Scott is off. Dylan is off this mm -hmm. morning as well. Uh, so we're going to jump into our fog watch in a minute. Yeah. We need an update because that's what you were tracking all morning for us. But uh, thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. Of course, we go live every weekday morning right around this time. Uh, it stays on your feet, though, all day long. So whatever time works best for you to get your latest news and weather headlines. We make it into a podcast after we're done, so you can find it at inform.com slash podcast. Just look for the Inform Minute. You can also find us on our Inform YouTube channel, uh, and we love it when you wake up and join us from 5 to 7 live on WDAY. Yes. You got a lot of uh, viewer feedback this morning. lots People. of emails this morning. People are in a chatty mood. <laughs> we like that. We, like we were that talking too. about water at one point. I had cloud questions. I had lots of walk the dog pictures, so... Chit chat yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm awake. Might as well chit chat. Um, okay, so we've had some fog this morning. Had rain yesterday. Obviously, the rain is done falling from the sky now, but the moisture just kind of hanging out with us. Wherever we had a clear sky, that allowed fog to form. It started on the Minnesota side, but North Dakota has actually started to become pretty soupy, especially about Highway 281. So Devil's Lake, Jamestown points out to the west. Sit with some soup this morning. That'll take another hour or two to disperse. We don't have any wind today, a very light wind kind of day. So I don't have any big push of air to get rid of that fog. So we'll rely on the sunshine to do it. And it's going to take a little time to officially get that sun up over the horizon, shine brightly enough to disperse some of the fog. Just kind of the way it works. So deal with fog for the next couple of hours. Then we'll get some sun this afternoon. Temps in the 60s, the light wind should turn into a pretty nice afternoon. Maybe a spotty sprinkle in northern Minnesota today. Uh, tomorrow, kind of a similar split. We'll have more sun further off to the south and southwest, including Fargo. A few more clouds, Grand Forks, points up to the north, northeast, uh, into northern Minnesota. You could once again get hit with a little bit of a midday shower tomorrow up north. I do not expect Fargo to get any rain out of that. So we should stay dry, sunny, windy, though, tomorrow, picking up out of the north, northwest, gusting about 30 to 35. Uh, still seeing temps up into the 60s to near 70 for tomorrow afternoon. Pretty oh, good way nice. for a Friday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, low 60s through the weekend into Monday, and then time's up. <laughs> <laughs> things are changing. Yes, things are changing. We are kind of living on borrowed time, as I'd like to say, when it gets to late October and we're still getting lots of 60s. Uh, we'll take it as long as we can get, but I do have an expiration date on that. It's Monday afternoon is the last of the 60s. We'll start cooling off. We'll see rain move in Monday night into Tuesday, lasting Tuesday, Wednesday, about Thursday. Uh, temperatures will fall with that too. We'll be down into the 40s during that rain system. After mm. that, 30s for highs by next weekend. So that's much different than what we have been feeling lately. Like winter coat kind of weather. We know it's coming, but yeah. it's still a hard adjustment. It's never easy, nope. especially when it is kind of sharp like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, on our 10-day forecast, you can see 60s, 40s, 30s. Like that turn is right there. So it'll be much different by the time we get to next weekend. All right. Yeah. Well, we've Enjoy been it while you have like, it. Like right now, dig out the hats and gloves. Make sure you have matching gloves. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so you're mm -hmm. always going to find one, but maybe yep. not two. And oh yeah, all of those fun little treats because 30s for highs means winter coat weather Absolutely. by next weekend. So all it's right. coming. Sounds good. All okay. Right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, let's start with a couple of things happening today. Uh, today, a new bus safety course is being offered with the hope of keeping our kids safer in the event of a crash when our kids are on a bus, a school bus specifically. This class is being offered by Safe Kids Grand Forks. Uh, the people are looking to teach child care employees, school staff members, how to properly seat kids on a bat, bus. They'll also cover things like evacuation plans, how to undo some of the restraints in an emergency. Uh, one of those new classes being held today at Safe Kids office in East Grand Forks, that's on Demers. And of course, uh, very timely, this comes uh, in the wake of a bus crash that happened just last month. You probably remember, we reported here on WDAY, 25 volleyball players from Hatton Northwood uh, were hit while on their way to a volleyball game. Several players were hurt. Uh, some still recovering even now. So if you want more information on that class, uh, you can check out Safe Kids uh, East Grand Forks, Safe Kid Grand Forks for more information on today's class and future classes as well. Also starting today, a big weekend for uh, youth deer hunting in Minnesota. The opener starts today. It's this weekend. I want to give you a few reminders. Of course, kids have to be between the ages of 10 and 17 to go hunting this weekend. They do need to be accompanied by an adult. That adult does not need to be licensed. Kids that are hunting, though, do have to have a valid firearm deer license. Those 12 and under must have a firearm safety certificate as well. And remember, you have to be wearing that blaze orange. You can also wear blaze pink, but it means to be very, very bright. 
And if you need your DQ fix, this is an update. You'll appreciate this story. The Fargo Dairy Queen on 13th Avenue. Uh, it had more than a million dollars in damage uh, because of a fire a while back. Well, it's now back open at full capacity. The owners were hopeful it would only take a few months, but as investigators kept working, it was clear the building needed significant repairs. Um, you might have noticed they were able to open with a limited menu back in the summer, but now the update is they have their full menu back. All right, and then we jump into some of the headlines uh, that we are tracking for you this morning that affects so many of us. Right now, West Fargo police investigators are warning people about a new fake lottery scam in our area, kind of a new twist on an old scam. This one's getting a lot of people's attention, though, because in this scam, letters claim that people have won the West Fargo lottery. So, of course, that kind of grabs you. You think it's local. It doesn't seem like something that would, you know, be from overseas. Well, the catch is when people are getting this letter, they're told that you can get your winnings wired directly to you when you provide your bank information. Of course, officers are saying you should never provide that information to anyone, especially when it's connected to you can get this, you know, prize money, but you have to give us your personal banking information. Don't do that. If you do receive this letter at all, West Fargo Police want to hear about it, so you can call West Fargo Police directly or the Red River Dispatch Center. Right now, Fargo Police officers are also investigating a series of late-night garage fires that they say were set on purpose. They happened at a few apartment buildings just off of 42nd Street and 9th Avenue South in Fargo. That's the area near the Century 10 Theater. Five different fires were set between June 27th and September 30th. Uh, so if you have any information on those fires, uh, of course, it's an arson investigation right now. You can call police, that Fargo police number, 241-1405. Sometimes it's easy as just to text. They make it easy for you. Text a tip with keyword Fargo PD to 847-411. Another story that we're tracking for you right now on WDAY, the Cass County Jail is busting at its seams. Uh, the worst capacity issues uh, that they've seen in more than 20 years. That's what we're hearing from the Cass County Sheriff. The jail can hold 348 people. But over the last couple of weeks, it's been at 400 inmates. Now, we spoke with Sheriff Jesse Johnner about the overcrowding issues. He says there are three things behind it. Right now, he says the community is growing it and, and fast. Second, 40% of inmates don't have a permanent address. And third, the length of stays are getting longer, uh, which is interesting. Johnner says more people aren't committing crimes. In fact, the jail had 4,000 fewer bookings this year compared to last year. It's a change in the crimes that are happening says the crimes are more serious, and that means they're in jail longer. Right now, he says he thinks the solution is additional crime prevention measures. Lydia brought this up. We did talk about it a lot this morning. What uh, does great water taste like? Just turn on the tap. If you live in Fargo anyway, and you can find out, for the fourth time, Fargo has been recognized for having the best tasting water in the state. Uh, Fargo won last year as well, back in 2014 and 2011. The title was given to Fargo at the North Dakota Water and Pollution Control Conference in Grand Forks during a blind taste test. Valley City and Macville rounded out the top three. And this is one of the emails we got this morning. Uh, Lydia and I both live in West Fargo. We said, well, I, I like the tap water in West Fargo. Coming from the same place. So if you think West Fargo and Fargo water uh, taste the same, you're right. Uh, how about from water to donuts? And I actually uh, taste tested some Sandy's Donuts this morning to celebrate. Sandy's Donuts of West Fargo is marking 40 years as the region's go-to location for anything covered in sprinkles, glaze, or bacon. It was back in 1983 that Donna and her husband Sandy opened Sandy's Donuts. Uh, you probably know it started in West Fargo, but there are now three locations in the metro, daily delivery as well up and down the valley and into Lakes Country as well, so everyone can get their fix. They now have just over 100 employees. They're doing a lot of the work, of course, while many of you are sleeping. Some mornings, though, they sell up to 10,000 donuts, and we love them all. Uh, a big story we're tracking for you today, President Joe Biden is expected to make a primetime Oval Office address tonight to talk about his recent trip to Israel. We've been reporting that for you on WDAY. The president is now just back. Tonight, he's expected to make a direct appeal to the American people to continue funding the wars that are happening abroad. The address comes on the eve of the White House requesting more than $100 billion from Congress. The money would go towards aid and resources to Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and the situation on the U.S.-Mexico border as well. You can watch the President's address right here on WDAY uh, at 7 o'clock tonight. Another big story, the U.S. has not had a House Speaker now for 15 days. Yes, we are tracking the days. Uh, also, we're just 28 days away from a government shutdown. 
with major aid packages, like I just mentioned, to Ukraine and Israel um, on hold. Uh, we know there will be another vote, another round of voting. Yesterday did not go so well um, for Jim Jordan, a failed vote. There will not be one this morning. We're hearing at the very earliest there could be another round of voting this afternoon. Um, we're hearing, though, that there's growing support right now to expand the role and responsibilities of the temporary speaker so they can open up the House. A another big story kind of related to this that we're tracking for you, several House Republicans who voted against Jim Jordan uh, and his House speakership bid say they're now receiving threats, um, some of them pretty serious, uh, some just experiencing pro-Jordan robocalls, menacing text messages, but some are receiving death threats since casting their votes. Uh, Jordan has condemned those death threats, but of course an investigation is underway and will uh, continue to keep you updated on what is happening uh, in that situation. All right, Hot Mike with Dom Izzo coming up uh, this morning, 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. The high school football regular season is down to the final two days. We're going to take a look at who is play playoff bound ahead. Plus, this is a big one. Uh, UND is preparing to welcome an old friend, friend, put that in air quotes, uh, Minnesota. It's going to be a huge early college hockey showdown. Brad Schlossman uh, will be in to preview the series. All that and more on Hot Mike, 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra and Inform.com. And remember, all of these headlines, news, weather, sports, you can find at Inform.com. And right now, you can get your subscription for 99 cents a month for your first three months. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe to check it out. Our next newscast coming up here this morning at 11. And, of course, we have you covered starting this afternoon at 4, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. Tomorrow's Friday. We'll be back with your Friday edition of First News from 5 to 7. Have a great day, everyone.